Okay, so good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Yuki. I am from the CloudBand product management team. With me, I have uh, Moshe and Alicia from our engineering team. And we're going to talk to you about uh, taking applications, taking telco applications to the cloud, opportunities and challenges. We will go briefly through the transformation NFV is going through, <coughs> describe the business perspective of, uh, of EPC, talk to, do, to you about actual use cases, describe the architecture and the NFV platform, and then we conclude with a demo of uh, uh, root cause analysis. <coughs> so just briefly about Alcatel Lucent, I'm not sure how many telco guys do we have here, telecom guys? Quite a few. So for those that are not telco guys, so we'll tell you a little bit about Alcatel Lucent. Uh, so Alcatel Lucent is a telecom, uh, a telecom vendor, is one of those vendors that sell uh, high performance, high reliability boxes that when you pick up your phone, it allows you uh, to speak to your family or text your colleagues with uh, high quality and with little, uh, little chances of failure. Uh, <coughs> Alcatel Lucent, back in 30, 2013, actually uh, in introduced its, sh its shift strategy. As part of it, it is shifting to the cloud. And as part of this, uh, Alcatel now provides a full end-to-end -end solution of NFV, actually starting from the NFV platform, uh, the, act the software, the, the SDN uh, platform, and the actual telco applications, be it uh, virtual IMS, EPC, uh, ver VRAN, and, uh, and virtual routing. Uh, helping us innovate our, uh, our, our strategic partners in the infrastructure layer, we are able, we have early access to uh, technologies that enable innovation on the NFV front. And we also demonstrate our commitment to openness through the cloud and ecosystem program, where, which actually allows other vendors, not only Alcatel Lucent, to leverage the platform and uh, run their applications on, to on top of it. <coughs> Uh, but, <clears throat> so a little bit about CloudBand. So CloudBand was as a business unit that was found by Alca founded by Alcatel Lucent uh, four years ago. Actually, it was given a single task, which is to provide a platform, an NFV pl a cloud platform that allows uh, service providers to run uh, telco applications in the cloud, Alcatel Lucent applications, as well as, uh, as other applications. When it started back in 2011, uh, Let's say the term NFV did not exist, and we were quite alone in this area. Only in October 2012, uh, the first NFV white paper was published by a group of service provider. January 2013, at the NFV ISG first meeting. If you look at what happened in the OpenStack timeline during this period, this is an OpenStack summit. So in Portland, uh, you wouldn't find a person who knows what is NFV. In Hong Kong, there was an NFV mini summit uh, held in a remote hotel with a handful of participants. Only around spring 2014, pretty much around the Atlanta summit timeline, the telco working group uh, in OpenStack was established and actually some awareness uh, to NFV uh, started, to, uh, uh, started to be created. And for those of you, of you who were in Paris uh, last November, uh, we saw that NFV was really starting to take center stage. Uh, and <clears throat> I think another, th another thing to mention is the establish establishment of OPNFV group uh, lay in late 2014. Uh, anyone, by the way, anyone here was in the OPNFV day on Monday? OK, so those of you that didn't come, good, you did, good that you didn't come because the room was uh, fully booked. You wouldn't, be, you wouldn't have place to get in. Uh, which actually demonstrates uh, how, uh, how uh, top of mind NFV is for OpenStack. So here in Vancouver, if I uh, go around I would, uh, and speak to people, I can, I'm willing to make a bold bet and say that anyone uh, knows what NFV is about, at least. OK, but you didn't, hear, you didn't come here to, talk about, to hear about the history of NFV. Uh, we're here to talk to you about the transformation uh, NFV is going through and how it actually affects actual applications going to the cloud. So as I, <coughs> as I started and said, the CloudBand has been in this area for four years. Uh, two, two and a half years ago, we started to see the first customer going into NFV, and those was, were CTO and innovation teams 
trying to build an NFV platform uh, along the lines of Etsy NFV, something that is very pure, very futuristic, uh, which allows uh, whoever deploys this platform to leverage all the benefits of the cloud, uh, elasticity, uh, elasticity, distribution, and you know, reap all the benefits uh, of uh, OPEX and CAPEX uh, reduction, as well as the service agility. And this is what we built the CloudBand platform for. Uh, however, in the last 12 months or so, we've seen a transformation. Uh, actually, <coughs> operations teams, those teams that have the big budgets at their hands and they are uh, in charge of maintaining and growing the existing telco business, they are now coming to uh, the telco, to service, to telco equipment vendors like Acta Lucent, and they're telling us, uh, what we would like to buy from you is not those boxes that you uh, were selling us for all these years. Now we have NFV, and we, we would like to have those, uh, those applications as VNFs uh, to run in the cloud. And actually, I think this is a huge thing for the industry, that such a trend as an NFV is not being pushed only in a purist way by you know, evangelists and CTO teams, but rather, let's say, from the ground, out, ground up, by the operations teams. <clears throat> OK. So we at Alcatel Lucent, we have, uh, let's say, the full uh, portfolio of uh, telco applications. We have uh, IMS, we have EPC, virtual run, we have routing, a routing portfolio, you name it. Uh, I arbitrarily chose EPC to focus on. Uh, and for those of you who don't come from telco, I saw the some of you don't. Uh, I created this slide uh, to do a little, to, uh, <coughs> to explain briefly what EPC is about. So when each of you takes your smartphone and actually wants to browse the web, for instance, uh, his traffic goes through the, uh, to the radio access network on the left and to the web and, of course, the other way around. And on the way, we have several gateways. This seems quite straightforward, but actually it is not that simple, just to describe in a simplified way, what happens is when you try to browse the web, the gateway actually contacts the policy server, the PCRF, which in turn goes to the subscriber da database to pull your profile, uh, authenticate and authorize you based on your credentials, and then you're able to uh, log into the web. But let us not forget that this is a mobile network, which is why we have uh, this uh, element on top left, the MME, which actually is responsible for handling mobility. So when you transition from one gateway coverage area to another, actually this element makes sure that your uh, session is handed off uh, correctly. So this entire suite of applications, it's called EPC, Evolved Packet Core. And taking it to NFV means that each and every of these elements needs to be virt virtualized and run in the cloud. <coughs> So now that you're all experts on EPC, let's take it a little bit from a business perspective. So what we're showing here are the main drivers for uh, mobile traffic growth in the next few years. Uh, so first, we have Volte Voice over LTE. Uh, voice over LTE is about taking the legacy voice that has been around, let's say, for the last 20 or 30 years and moving it to a data-based architecture, uh, uh, which allows actually all mobile service provider to discard their old equipment. Uh, so this, uh, this uh, application actually is growing 145% uh, compound annual gro growth rate. Uh, to describe it in a, let's say, in more uh, intuitive way, it go grows uh, 2.5 uh, by a factor of 2.5 each year, 2012 to 2017. Uh, video, we all know video is king. Uh, now we have HD, we have 4K coming in, and uh, we will have something else coming in after that. And uh, this is, uh, this actually is a, <coughs> this constitutes a huge dem uh, demand for data and the networks have to grow to address that. Machine to machine, all those smart meters, cars, all these uh, elements that talk between themselves. So this one talks about revenues, but obviously the increase of revenues also talks about creating networks that are able 
uh, to address these requirements. And last but not least, enterprise. So enterprise is a huge use case for, uh, uh, for mobile. And we will talk a little bit about the enterprise use case uh, later on. So uh, as we saw, this is a huge opportunity. So for a service provider to be able, uh, service providers that will be able to address this will actually be able to grow their business and grab market share. But in order to do all that, we need to enable for rapid innovation, service agility, scalability, and quick ROI. And we will show in the next few slides how, slides how NFV actually helps us address those, uh, those requirements by a few examples. So first example is uh, the introduction of a new enterprise gateway. So again, as I told you, enterprise is a huge use case uh, for mobile. Uh, so once, if we want to do enterprise VPN, for example, one of the best way to do it nowadays is actually to introduce an enterprise gateway that actually terminates the VPN for the enterprise itself. Now, in the old days, you would have to get a box and actually put it somewhere and connect it. And now, with the NFV around, you're able to do it within a click of a button. Uh, this is something that well, let's say a completely new operation model allows you to introduce the service, take it out without actually, uh, without actually uh, investing in CapEx uh, specifically. Service agility is huge. You can you know, order and uh, one day get it the day after. Example, first example. Second example, scalability. So capacity needs to be scaled. Sometimes it's temporarily, sometimes it's permanently. This use case we're talking you here on the red, it's a stadium, just for example, a public event where capacity needs to be scaled up for a limited period. So <clears throat> if we want to do that in an NFV, in the NFV era, we're actually able to monitor what's going on. And then based on the actual KPIs that we have in the network and the actual use of traffic, we can predict when, it, when we need new capacity and actually to grow it automatically. And you know we can take it out if it's, it's something that is temporary, we can take it out. So also from a CapEx perspective, it's not so painful uh, as it was once before. Service chaining. So service chaining is about inserting advanced services in the data plane so that users, either, either enterprise users or, uh, or uh, uh, residential, use, re residential users could enjoy advanced services. So what that would mean in the legacy world is for each a, such service, you would have to take a box, put it in a data center, then connect it to the network, configure the switches, the routers, and there you have it. You have a service. So this is heavy lifting that no one would have wanted to introduce such a service in the past. Now. That we, have, uh, that we have NFV and SDN. Uh, this actually means creating a service actually means creating a template. And once we want to instantiate it, we do it like that. And then we have all these appliances interconnected. We have the SDN, the SDN steering the traffic uh, along this uh, service chain path. And it's a new service, can be applied for one enterprise and for the second enterprise in the same way in or in a slightly modified way. Uh, so obviously, this actually enables new business models for, uh, uh, for mobile operators. For example, this you can now uh, suggest such a service for a trial period if you want to take it out. No problem. You don't have to repurpose the equipment. You don't have to cause service outages, something that, again, was not possible in the legacy world. So I told you about all these benefits, but this session is about opportunities and challenges, so I should speak about at least one challenge. Uh, so <clears throat> let's take it from a service assurance perspective, talking a little bit about uh, alarm correlation, what happens uh, when there is a failure. So in order to explain the complexity, I have to dive deeper and explain what such VNF, how it is composed. So that's very simple. Let's no, go to the next slide. Uh, so this, what we have here, actually describes how uh, VNF, how it maps to actual virtual resources in this layer, 
and to physical resources on the layer beneath. So as you can see, the mapping is, is not that trivial. So if we look at what we had in the old days, right, we had a blade in a chassis that used to provide a service. This blade had a blinking LED on it. If, this, if the application was done, we could restart it. If the blade was faulty, we would go to the, we would send a truck to replace it with a new one. Now that we have uh, this architecture, then we cannot really tell whether an issue an application ex is, experiences is experiencing is due to an application issue or something that happens on the physical infrastructure. For example, maybe another application running on the same data center, on the same physical infrastructure, is actually causing this trouble, what we call a noisy neighbor problem. Uh, or maybe it's an application problem. Looking at it from a different angle, so if we remember what we had in the old days, we had actually we had a chassis with two blades configured in active standby mode, talking to one another in, uh, uh, for a, a, in a keep alive protocol that would rely on, let's say, a 50 microseconds uh, turnaround time, which was possible because it was a high throughput, zero latency switch fabric at the, at the end. And now when we have, when this, uh, when this blade actually transformed to a VM, we need to make sure that those VMs are placed with uh, particular affinity requirements. And we, we need to address those quality of service requirements of those VMs so that actually the application could even function. So, so much about the use cases. So let me give you a couple of architecture slides. So those of you that are familiar with Etsy NFV with the reference architecture architecture could uh, recognize, uh, let's say, a simplified view of this architecture. And this is how uh, uh, the Alcatel-Lucent EPC solution actually maps to this architecture. At the bottom, we have uh, the cloud band node. Actually, it's a cloud in a box. I will talk a little bit more about it later. But it has the Vim, the OpenStack uh, that manages the cloud in it. Uh, at the top right, we have the cloud management system, which is the orchestrator, uh, which assists on several tasks in this, all these use cases that I just uh, described. Uh, in the middle, on the left, we have the VNFs. Actually, those are the network functions that actually make sure that the, the mobile functionality actually works. And on top, we have uh, the 5620SAM, which is an element that, uh, that contains also the EMS, the element management server, uh, uh, server that takes care of managing all the functionality of EPC, as well as the VNFM, which actually makes sure that lifecycle management of these VNFs is handled correctly, like you know, deployment, scaling, and healing. <coughs> so a little bit more about the NFV platform. So again, the cloud we know that I talked about, uh, actually, again, a cloud in a box. It contains all the infrastructure, like uh, compute, distributed storage uh, in, this, in the form of uh, Ceph, SDN in the form of, uh, of a Nuage, uh, Nuage network from Alcatel Lucent. Uh, in addition to that, we have monitoring capabilities of the entire cluster. We have management capability, lifecycle management, of the cluster itself, <coughs> allowing it to function uh, auto uh, actually autonomously, because you know those things they don't go in a managed data center; they actually go uh, on a curbside uh, central office, and we don't have personnel to maintain them. On top, we have the cloud band management system, which actually manages multiple nodes, multiple uh, OpenStack instances. So imagine that you have multiple data centers, then this piece on top actually makes sure that you have a single pane of glass to manage all of them. Let's talk a little bit about what we have here inside. So actually, this is a set of services that could be used all together or one by one separately, all accessible through APIs. So for example, we have application lifecycle management. As I mentioned, this capability is not used in the EPC use case, but if, for example, you have a simpler ap application that doesn't have a VNFM, uh, virtual network function management, as part of its infrastructure, then you could use this infrastructure for a one-stop shop 
for an application catalog and lifecycle management. We have distributed uh, resource management capability, which allows you to make sure that all the resources in your infrastructure in the, mul in the different clouds are actually synced. So for example, if you need to introduce an image and make sure it's available here and there, then you don't have to do it manually. Uh, this, it's simply uh, a policy-based deployment makes sure that it is available wherever it's needed. And this is true also for users, for keepers, and any other uh, resource. Skyview makes sure that you have a consolidated data model that allows you to get to proper placement decisions and allows you to do broad root cause analysis and also to provide you a view uh, of your virtual infrastructure from a single pane of glass. Uh, advanced network integration in SDN, as I mentioned, for example, if you would like to have your applications actually use networking that is distributed across multiple data centers, as most of our applications uh, do need, then we do have this capability to deploy distributed networks uh, throughout the data centers and the WAN. Finally, uh, we have Insights, which is actually all about monitoring, collecting data, uh, maintaining it, and performing root cause analysis uh, and uh, generating alarms, uh, which is actually a good point to move to the next part of the session. We will dive deeper into these capabilities in cloud management system, and I would like to call uh, Alicia and Moshe to proceed with that part. Hi. So when we say root cause analysis, what do we mean? And specifically in the context of, of NFV. So as Yuki mentioned, we have several layers over here that are happening in which things are happening in parallel. So we first of all have the application layer where the actual VNF is running. We have issues, we have the virtualization layer, the, the IaaS services in a sense, and we have the physical layer. And in all, each one of these layers, things are happening, there could be problems, there can be, and these problems can be also correlated. A problem on the one hand on the host level can propagate up all the way to the application level. And when we have applications that are sharing the same physical infrastructure, they can also affect each other. So when we start having problems in the system, when faults begin to occur, there's going to be a deluge of of alerts pouring into our to our monitoring system, and we need to start making heads or tails of it. Specifically, what that means is trying to find what the core issues are, what the root cause analysis is, what the root cause is of a specific uh, events, so that we can make uh, focus our energies on where we can really address things. We can also be able to assign responsibility to the correct uh, the correct service or the correct um, people in the organization that should address it and also automatically deal with the problems when possible. Okay, and this is, this is effectively what root cause analysis is all about. It's especially important in the context of NFV. Um, another aspect which we also uh, work on in cloud is what we call deduced alerts. Sometimes, especially you know, with OpenStack having you know, only initial monitoring capabilities, there will be situations where there, were, there are certain things we know are occurring because we understand our system. We understand that when something happens, it can cause something else to happen. But we don't see it. We don't actually see it explicitly. For example, if we have um, the physical infrastructure has a storage switch through which a VM will access its storage, and the storage is, the switch goes down, then the VM might still be alive from Nova's perspective, but it can't really do anything because it doesn't have access to its storage. But if we notice that there's a problem on the storage level, on the physical level, we can also alert uh, raise an alert on the VMs, which can also notify the VNFs, the people that are managing them, that there could be a problem on their VM due to a problem in the infrastructure. So this is what we call deduced alerts, where we sort of, whereas the RCA is about taking all the alerts together and finding what the source of the problem is. Here it's understanding that we understand that certain things affect each other, and so we can, you know, deduce what, how A affects B and report it accordingly. And this is sort of like the long-term view of what we would like to have, right? We would like to have something along, along these lines where, and actually we could, our system already now could support this if we had enough information where you can see over here on the, on the very bottom, you have an application down alert that's indicating that there's a problem in that application. And the application can be divided into several tiers. That's the second layer from the bottom, which is based on state of certain VMs that are part of this application. And Finally, we go up, we can see that there's problems with the hosts upon which these VMs are, are sitting, and the problem on the host is because of 
you know, specific issues such as a memory load or there's no access to the host. So this is sort of like the long-term view of what we would like to see. Um, and actually, the engine we developed can support this specific scenario as long as we have enough information about the system that relates these different uh, uh, entities one to the other. So we're going to see um, a smaller version of exactly this uh, as part of, as part of uh, what we do. We show in the demo. And it's also important to mention that those of you who were in OPNFV and some of the talks yesterday, they talked about Doctor. So Doctor is uh, the, one of the analytics uh, uh, projects within OPNFV. This is exactly the view that they're, that they're promoting there. Where we need to have this holistic view of the system where we see the physical and the virtual coexisting in terms of our alerts and monitoring so that we don't have this problem where we have one system monitoring the physical layer and another physical system monitoring the virtual, and then you have to go and make heads or tails of it. So let me just uh, talk what we're going to show for the demo, and then I'll, um, uh, we'll start the demo itself. So what we're going to do for the purpose of this demo is we have Nagios monitoring our physical infrastructure, and we're going to create a load on, uh, on the CPU of one of our two hosts that we have running there. Um, we have, we're going to have an application, a uh, heat stack, which is going to be running on, those, on, 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 this, uh, on this node, which is, by the way, sitting all the way across the Atlantic in Israel. Um, and we're going to basically have Nagios notify of a, certain, of, of a problem, the problem of the CPU. This is going to cause an alert to be raised for the VMs that um, uh, indicate that they have a CPU, a uh, high load of CPU. This is simulating a noisy neighbor scenario where the, sort of the VM is suffering because its neighbors on the physical infrastructure are, uh, have, are taking up a lot of the host CPU. This information will be processed by CloudBand's RCA engine, which will then notify the VNFM, the VNF manager, that the problem is because we have this uh, issue on the host. The VNFM then can take action and decide to move the, v the, the, the VMs from one host to another where this problem does not exist. Okay, and this is exactly the kind of uh, uh, fast reaction we would want and expect from our system. Um, so without further ado, I'll pass it over to Moshe for a moment to show you how uh, in Clubben we um, interact with stacks, and then we'll move on to the actual demo. Yeah. Thank you, Alicia. So uh, we'll start with the demo presentation. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna look at the CloudBand user interface and uh, we'll see the demo that uh, Alicia described. So here we see the deployment screen. This is an aggregated view of all application deployed across uh, different OpenStack instances uh, with uh, various uh, application types like uh, Heat and Tosca. So I'll just go ahead and uh, deploy a Heat application. Just give it a name. Here you can see I can choose the OpenStack instance. This stack will get deployed on. And just have the template. Okay, this template simulates a media gateway application. Uh, so it's very simple, two servers and, uh, and a volume. This Mac is great. OK. OK, so this stack is now getting deployed. I'll have here a, an application. We have a media gateway application that already got deployed earlier on. I'll just go here to the runtime view. OK. And this is a topology of our application. And we can see here, uh, actually, CloudBand is auto-detecting these resources from the OpenStack instance and creating a CloudBand data model of the application in which we know how to link the virtual resources to the physical hardware. And in order to do all the root cause analysis that uh, Alicia mentioned, so we can see here the network topology. We can see the servers. We can see the volumes, all the uh, interesting components of our application. 
And we also have here a distribution view where we can see that we have one VM on uh, compute zero zero and another VM on compute zero one. So let's go ahead and um, for the next step. So now once the, the stack got deployed, uh, what, a VNFM what a VNF manager would do is to su subscribe to alerts on that uh, stack. So this simulates a uh, HTTP request that a VNF manager will do. So basically what we say here to CloudBand, uh, I am interested in alerts on this uh, stack ID, any alert that is related to a VM resource. And once an alert occurs, uh, call back this uh, URL of the VNFM uh, application uh, manager and with all the details of the alert, allowing the VNF manager to decide what to do. So we'll send this. Okay, and the alert was created. I'll hand it off to Alicia to continue. <coughs> Thank you. Um, so, as mentioned, over here in the distribution view of the application, um, so you can see on the bottom that the current status we have is we have this application is divided between two hosts, right? One on compute zero one, one on compute zero zero. So we're going to raise the load on compute zero zero, and then we're going to see what happens. Hopefully, it works. Okay. So here we are on compute zero zero. We're going to use a Linux stress tool to raise the load in terms of CPU on the um, on this compute. Head back here. Okay, so now what's happening in the background, of course, is that the load is actually being raised on the compute. Nagios is going to be monitoring things, detecting when these alerts, uh, when, the, when, the, when it reaches a certain threshold. So that's why we're waiting over here for a little bit. And once that happens, what's going to happen is that the alerts are going to be sent to CloudBand. CloudBand will process the Nagios alerts and potentially also other physical layer um, uh, reports can be processed. Once we, it's going to process this, determine that it also impacts the VMs and understand that these two are uh, related and notify the VNF manager that this is happening so it can take action and migrate the VMs. Now, what's important for me to note is that this mechanism that we built over here, it's not a mechanism that is like hard coded. We haven't just said, oh, we have like these three use cases which we know are going to happen and we're going to write them down in code and now they're going to, this is what's going to happen in the system. But rather what's going to happen is a much more sophisticated thing, which is that we have um, let's also go over and see quickly if we can see them migrating before the alerts arrive, because sometimes it happens so quick you can't even see it happen. Um, okay. One moment. We'll get a notification when, once the alert goes on. Anyway, so what we did was, okay, it's still running. Very good. Okay. Um, what we did Oh, here we are. The alerts have arrived. Let's head over as quick as we can to see the migration and process. And this happens too fast. Let's see if we can see. Um, OK. Let's move over to the deployment view. See if we can find it happening there. OK. So right now, the alerts have arrived. Right? You can all see that little icon on the top saying the alerts have arrived. Now the migration process is going to start. Now, as I, as I began to say, what we built here really is an engine. What you need for this engine is to understand the relationship between the different, the different hosts, or the different ent entities in the system. So the more you understand the system, you can simply enter some sort of a template indicating that these are the relationships between the, um, between the entities. OK, I think I'm going to stay over here. And you can say when a certain alert of one type is raised, then we want to address this, um, we want to address this, um, uh, uh, like we, then, then we know that one type of alert can cause another alert, and we can link these two together and understand that one is the cause of the other. 
And so this is really an issue which we, uh, a, um, a tool which you can then upgrade and improve the more you understand your system, whether it is as we understand like a specific system or automatically detecting things using machine learning tools, all these things are capable. So while we wait for the migration to take place, I want to show you for a moment what's happening in terms of the root cause analysis. So here we have an alert, VM CPU suboptimal performance, which was raised because we had an alert on the host. And so if I try to understand why it happened, and this is from the, the view of the VNF manager, of the VNF owner. So I'm looking at my system saying, why do I have a problem with my CPU? I can see over here that the, v, the VM CPU suboptimal alert is actually caused by another, another alert, the host high CPU load. So I, even though I don't actually have access to the host view, I don't actually, I can actually see what's happening um, on the host level. I can see, I can still get information from, uh, from CloudBand indicating that this is the source of the problem. So let's see if the migration is completed. Not yet. Okay, so it takes a bit to refresh. Um, okay. So I think while we wait for this to refresh, um, if we have any questions, I think we have five more minutes till the end of the session. So, any, I think we'll, we'll, we'll wait for this to refresh so, while we have it. But tell them what will happen. Right, so what's going to happen actually as we, as we watch this thing is that we're going to see that these VMs migrate to a new location. And specifically, in the end, you're going to see over there in the bottom, le in the bottom left that we have uh, VMs. Both of them are going to be placed in the Compute 01, not in Compute 00. Um, and, that's, and that will show basically that we've, CloudBand has notified the VNF manager of the current status of, uh, of the VMs. The VNF manager can then decide to migrate them to a location where there is no load on the host. OK, so we gave you a crash course on EPC told you, walked you through the use cases, and we showed you a demo of how actually we're using a cloud platform to actually address the practical uh, difficulties of uh, going to a cloud deployment. So if anyone has any questions, then that's the time. Please, can you head ahead to the mic? Uh, or it would be excellent. So specific to NFV, um, in the cloud, what about the bear path? I mean, you, you had an SGW there, that's a bear plane. You had a PGW, that's a bear plane. <laughs> At large scale, and, and I represent a very large scale company, uh, you know, how, how do you actually envision that functioning in the cloud? Um, is, is, is the network good enough, anywhere near good enough, to handle the, the kind of load and the complexity that, that's there versus something like an MME that's a, essentially a compute node to begin with? Okay, so e excellent question. Actually, these are the exact questions that are being asked and are being addressed. So obviously, it's a, it's a journey. It's not that bare metal is going to be replaced by the cloud all at once. So I would assume that <coughs> initially on the, le the lower scale deployments, by the way, which is it's another advantage. You're able to you know to right size the deployment to the actual requirements. They will be addressed by NFV, and only later you know. Uh, terabit routers will be replaced by, uh, by VNFs. Uh, I can tell you that technologies for data plane and uh, uh, in general performance acceleration like SROV and DPDK are, you know, they're, they have huge interest and they're being, pushed to get, uh, they're being pushed and already in 2015 we hope to have some applications using those technologies and, you know, able to reach Significant, uh, significant performance, uh, but this will be again. This is something that will evolve uh, during the next few years. Any other questions? Please. So I guess see uh, for this demo, the source of information generated from Nagios. But um, do you have any plan to integrate with this, like uh, monitoring service as accelerometers, as a source of the information, so entire cloud okay, infrastructure? Go ahead. Um, this, okay. Um, so the the question was if we're here we're showing getting information from Nagios and do we want to also get information from Celometer. So actually any source of information of, of, of monitoring is, is a game in this context. We're also considering Ganglia and uh, and Celometer now has added 
Um, you know, uh, I think it also had before, but now it's also added a few more capabilities in terms of hardware monitoring. So as far as we're concerned, the more information, the better. The whole point of this capability is to be able to take a lot of information without it confusing the user. So you can actually tease it apart and understand what's the central issue and what's the peripheral one so you can focus your energies. So the more information, the better actually here. So perhaps it's also good to mention that we have uh, Munasca picking up as an open sec project that will uh, perhaps constitute a replacement, a more generic replacement for uh, Nagios, and this is something we're, we'll be, we are involved in and we'll be monitoring closely. Other questions, please? Um, what's the typical migration time for your VMs? I mean, so uh, how dirty are they? How, how much memory rights do they do? So how much time does it take to move it from one host to another when you have an issue? So we don't. Um, so we here in this in this uh, uh, use case, we use the migrate capabilities of, of OpenStack. So uh, I I personally can't testify to the exact uh, um, capabilities of OpenStack, but we're just relying on OpenStack's migration capabilities. That's what the VNFM, the v VNF manager, is going to, you know, is going to uh, request from OpenStack or from any other service to migrate the VMs. Our responsibility here, from above it, is to be able to motivate that migration and uh, make sure that it happens as fast as possible. So perhaps to add to that, so I, I would say probably many seconds to minutes, it's a, uh, a good guess, but again, uh, this, we need to make sure, we need to understand that this is like, uh, healing is only a supplement to high availability, right? We rely on high availability to make sure that service is not disrupted and healing just makes sure that the active and standby are there, okay? so. Um, we're being signaled that we're going out of time. So thank you all for coming. Uh, see you next time.